What's up? Welcome, Hi. welcome to episode 17. Thank you. Dude, it's been a while. Hey, that's my lucky number. It's your birthday. That's, that's, yeah, but that's my lucky number still. Dude, that's good. So I didn't even know. I mean, I, I, I know that that's your lucky number, but I didn't like correlate it when I heard like, oh, this planned. is episode 17. So that's pretty cool. So that works. Yeah. So welcome to episode 17 of whatever Hello. the fuck this is. I've been, I've been away for a while and we've been for way. I mean, sure, you've been away for, I've a, been while. for a while. But we're going to get all into that. Before we wanted to start, I just wanted to say that if you have been listening to whatever the fuck this is, thank you. Um, you could definitely do better things with your life, but thank you. And if you stuck around, I would love for you to follow, subscribe, um, just so you can keep receiving this kind of episode. And also your friends can receive them as recommendations and hopefully they can enjoy us to talking about random shit as well. So... Uh, I got a bunch of stuff that I want to go into today, but I think that before we go anywhere, you've missed that, didn't you? The 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 siren of the fire truck. I've halfway tuned it out by now. I just don't even like think oh, about it. Oh, by the way, we forgot to mention something important. And if you're on, there we go. There it is. Nostalgia. Oh, good. Stopped, oh it stopped right stopped here. Right in front. Let go. There we oh, go. Thank oh, you. There we go. Good. I cannot wait to move to a place where we're not going to live down the street from the fire department. Anyways, big news um, for the people that are watching. <laughs> we got a uh, we got a cat and we can actually start with that. Actually, Ched, Cheddar, it's a uh, it's it's there she is. She's an American sh- short hair, short, short hair. hair. Yeah, that, that's what she is. She's a uh, she's really sweet and she's a bit fat, but <laughs> but we love her because of it. And she's on a diet and she's exercising a lot. So um. <laughs> Tell us a bit about it because I mean the cat kind of falls into uh, your update. So yeah, so the cat will kind of fit into there. But let me know what have you been at since the last episode, which is I think last year. I don't know if you've been on an episode this year yet. Uh, I think I don't think not. not. I don't think so. No. So what you, what's 2021 been like for you? Because um, people need to deserve because <laughs> you've been in a fucking roller coaster. <laughs> there it is, the first swear word I know. <laughs> Um, it's been cool. I mean, it's been fine. Um, you know, we started off the new year just fine. I've been freelancing. I've had a couple startup projects on the side, um, and which I'll get to right. into detail later. I'll start with the uh, job interview that I thought I was getting when we had to go down to Flo- um, Charleston. I mean, yeah, dude, what right? was that? It was for trading technologies or yeah. So I applied and I found a job posting for a graphic designer at a trading technologies company. Mm. Um, and it was freelance and it just looked like any other job posting. And I've been looking for a job for God knows how long. So it didn't look any uh different to me right um so i applied and whatever i got an email back saying like they were interested yeah and that they wanted to do an interview and when they went to go do the interview how long was that like how long did it take from when you applied to when they it was like three days i think damn that's pretty quick maybe a day no it was, i think, I I think i'm gonna start a thing just for the episode i'm gonna put a red flag count like how many red flags are coming in this story? Okay, this is red flag yeah. number one. Mm-hmm. Okay, next thing. Next anyway, thing. I have I was involved in this just as much as you were, so I I'm know. at fault too. Anyway, continue. They wanted they said so they um requested to do an interview over Skype, and I was like, yeah, cool. Skype sounds cool. Mm-hmm. And then when we get to go when I get ready to go do the interview, it's like chat based. There you go. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, whatever. I asked them, I was like, why are we not doing video chat? And they're like, oh, your third round is going to be video chat and then your whatever. And it would. So your first round there. was going to be just like your, written my, out. Like your first and second round would be chat based so that they could do preliminary, kind of just like essay trials yeah. in a way. I don't know why that's. So I was I like, think. okay, I guess i mean i was excited i know you write answers and I was pretty like, well i was like I, i'm not losing anything by like submitting all this stuff you know yeah and um so i did the interview whatever and then the next day they're like congratulations you've 
you, we want to offer you the job for a freelance graphic designer at Trading Technologies. Yeah. Fully remote. And we're like, oh, shit. Good pay, good what benefits. The fuck? It said it was going to be $5,700 a month with all benefits and, and this and that and all the bells and whistles and uh, like uh, provided equipment and shit like that. And I was like, relocation oh, cool, cool. stuff as relocation, well, right? Relocation, yeah. like uh, everything. And from there, they did more um, interviews and more like chat based stuff. And then they're like, we're going to send you a check for um, your equipment. And I was like, wait, I thought you were going to send me the equipment. And ding, <laughs> Another number one. two. So I was like, okay, maybe you just got like a little confused. You know, like I figured like agencies and big tech companies can be a little chaotic you know and they yeah. still function like you know it was just like a little mix up so i was like okay she's like you're gonna set you're gonna um uh take this check and go get your supplies with it okay. and i was like okay that sounds cool cool makes sense and so i get the check like the next morning like fedexed overnighted right in the morning pause one second got a check sorry so this happens often, but we order groceries and they're on their fucking way. So I don't know when it's coming. But what are they saying? It's okay. They substituted our skirt steak for flank steak. Flank steak. That's okay. fine. What were you um, saying? Anyway, so um, they were, sent me a check the next morning, overnighted it, and it was a check for four thousand nine hundred and something dollars in my name, a physical check that came overnight FedEx on our doorstep at like 9 a.m. the next day. Damn. So I'm like, wow, okay. This is exactly That's the type real. of- getting It's exactly the type of like quickness and efficiency that like your agency had when you were receiving your laptop. My laptop, so I was yeah, like, exactly. I was like, okay, cool. This is like legit. It mm -hmm. felt so legit. And the check like name on it from like the, from the bank, I guess, for from the uh, account holder, I just didn't think twice of it. I showed it to you and it said, what is it? It was a, it was a glass, company. glass, something of Lincoln. Yeah. So it was like Lincoln, Nebraska glass company for AutoZone or something. Yeah. Like that. What does that right? have to do with trading technologies? And so we were like, what Illinois. does that have to do with trading technologies in Chicago? And we like looked it up and whatever. And Vlad and I went through and we're like, oh, okay. It must just be one of their like beneficiaries. Like yeah. they just got some of this money from there. So we just like, didn't think anything of it. And granted, this whole time we have to be packing up to go to Charleston because my, um, at the time my grandfather needed a surgery and my parents needed to go down to Florida to take care of him. And we were going to go down to Charleston and watch the house. So yeah. we went and did that. Um, through that time, that's when we thought I was getting the job. Right. And then we get to Charleston. I'm still doing this chat based thing. And for some reason I'm still not getting a video chat. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're yeah. like oh my god uh they told me before i left they're like deposit the thing let me deposit the check when it, let me know when the funds are available and i'm like okay cool 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 got it got it makes sense makes sense like they'll send me a list of like what i need and yeah it'll be fine like everything checked out and i asked these questions and everything was justified yeah and so when i told them that the funds were available they're like great now go Take it out in cash and bring it to this and transfer it to this. Oh my God, no. The chart should be like freaking out right now. Yeah, it should be like three, three warnings for this one. Three red flags. And I asked, I was like, why am I doing this? And they're like, oh, well, we're establishing trust in you to uh, transfer funds for the company. And I was like, mm, okay. They're like, we're just trying to uh, put trust in you as an employee. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Sure, but why cash? But like, either way, this person that I was speaking to had all the answers in the world. Yeah, weird so, answers as well. They they were speaking what they were saying would instead of will. Yeah, they wouldn't speak in like direct, really like English terms. It was more like um, you would receive the check and you would go get the um equipment. Right. And it's like, but but what do you mean I would? Yeah. Why like, don't you use will? will you will. You mean get I will get it? Or you or like, should? I or... should. Yeah. I, I can <laughs> or like you would just means like what like what do you mean by yeah, that I don't yeah. understand it's it's so it's like weird. I don't know and um so from there we I transferred the money unfortunately <laughs> yeah bro five grand five grand 
transfer the money out of my SunTrust personal banking account to some random account through Bank of America. I cannot believe that that check cleared. Yeah. To start off Granted. With. Okay. So because that check, check obviously was like the check not cleared. valid. After, anymore so I, okay if there's a timeline because we didn't find out about the check until after we caught the scam true 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 but at that so, point the check so, had been okay it was like oh yeah so far the check cleared through my account there were five thousand dollars in my account that they told me to go take out so like naturally i'm thinking well this isn't my money i'm not losing anything by withdrawing this from my account right and taking it somewhere else like this isn't even my money right you just like, like that's being my thought trustworthy. process i'm just being th- trustworthy and transferring the money like they asked me to like that's just what it sounded like to me and so i went and did that <clears throat> went home told them that i transferred the money sent them like the confirmation and whatever and then they asked me to cash app whatever was left because I didn't end up sending like they told me not to send the entire amount they sent me told me a specific amount to send and so then they told me like whatever you have left cash app it to this guy for your w-2 and your work documents and I was like wait what what I'm I don't have to cash pay up. anybody for my W-2. <laughs> cash up a cash trading up technologies somebody. corporation. <laughs> exactly. So that's where I was like, what the hell? Well, I think that was the final red flag for me. That was the big, that was yeah. the final red flag for both of us. Yeah. And so at that point we re-looked up trading technologies on Google and everything. And like, granted we had Googled this when I first got the thing and everything was cleared. Yeah. Was like, like it was a legit company. It was a legit it, it is a legit tech company. Yeah, it exists. If you search it up, like it's a pretty dope company. Like it's a good company. Yeah, exactly. Like, and but- so when we were told to do this cash app, I kind of put a pause. Like I didn't answer answer the person immediately. And we did this Googling and we went to the back to the Trading Technologies website and there's a new banner at the bottom that wasn't there when we checked the first time the week before or the weeks before. And it said, if you believe you've been hired by Trading Technologies, please contact us at this number because it, you might have been scammed. And we're yeah. like, uh oh. Yeah. Uh oh. So, so that's when my heart fucking dropped. Yeah, both of our hearts dropped down to like the basement of the non existent South Carolina house um, or the non existent basement of the South Carolina house. Yeah. God and, damn. um, so once we kind I was trying to figure out if anybody else there, uh, reported well, a scam yeah. from trading technologies because of that um because of that announcement that they had which mm-hmm. means that somebody else also got scammed yeah so i wanted to see if anybody came forth and shared their story I mean, you might be like one yeah, of the maybe. first one maybe hopefully you help out people because <laughs> god damn okay so anyway re- so we go thought, we saw the banner and yeah. that like Grant, this was not there before. Like we couldn't have no, we would have noticed it the first time, and we would have said no immediately. Yeah. But this banner was not there. Right. So like, like trading technologies was not aware of it when I got the job. Right. Quote unquote, got the job. Yeah. So we called that number, and I talked to the receptionist at the actual trading technologies, and I was like, hey, um, I'm on the onboarding process for trading technologies as a freelance graphic designer. Yeah. I'm talking to this Melissa person, Melissa Brown for this over HR. And, um, I saw, wait, your- wait, wait, I want to tweet the Chicago fire department and tell them that they are sponsored and <laughs> featured in most of our episodes. And I hope that one day they'll stop by here and just, <laughs> I'll pull up the windows. I can like just blast it for me. Okay, go on. Sorry. Anyway, um, and I told this woman at the reception desk all this stuff, and she's like, her her voice just kind of changes, and she's like, "I'm so sorry, those people don't work for us." And I'm like, Fuck. and I'm like, Fuck. dude, no. I'm like, my heart just drops. Like, there's a pit in my stomach because, like, this was I thought this was my big break. I thought I got this big job that was gonna make me all this money and get me a good resume, and make me good savings, and like somebody was impersonating them or. And so basically, what she explained to me was that there is a scam organization that is impersonating the trading technologies company almost seamlessly. So all the emails that I received from trading technologies, quote unquote, yeah, was trading dash technologies or like um, email addresses at 
trading dash technologies and then hr at trading dash technologies where Instead the of- actual ones is just trading technologies okay and yeah. so subtle yeah and there was one gmail that i missed where yeah. i just kind of overlooked it where i should have looked at it as well it was a trading technology yeah. at gmail and she basically explained to me that like all of these emails were fake and that everything i was being told was wrong and like it wasn't real and that they weren't actually wanting to hire. And I was like, obviously I'm heartbroken, oh, heartbroken. So I don't remember. She, did you go back to the bank that we went back to the bank that day? Yeah. No? So she also asked me on the phone to send me any and all information I had on them so that they could try and catch them. Yeah. So I told they, she gave me like their actual email mm. and whatever. And I'll get back to that later. So now I tell everybody, family and all that, and I'm like, we got to go to the bank and see if we can stop that transfer because, you know, like sometimes transfers don't go through. They usually do them at the end of the day, yeah. you know? So like sometimes it doesn't happen right Plus, away when you do it. Especially when it's cash. And then when it's cash, you know, like somebody's got to count the cash yeah. again. Like I, I figured maybe it does, it's not an instant process or whatever. Yeah. So we run back down to the Bank of America that I transferred the money to. And I was like, hey. I was here like an hour ago Yeah, and that I transferred this money and like, I need, I need you to stop it. And they're like, what? And I'm like, I need you to stop it. Like it's a scam. It's um, it's going to a scam account. Like it's going to be fraud. Like it's, I'm being scammed. Like you need to stop it. And um, they, they made us sit there for like 20, 30 minutes. Right. And they bring in the branch manager and whatever. And they're like, yep. Okay. So I think we were able to freeze the account. And the money did not go through. I was like, okay, awesome. And we talked to this branch manager, Dennis, at Bank of America. And he was like, so it looks like you got here just in time and whatever. And like he told me that I need to like file fraud claims with both Bank of America and SunTrust, being SunTrust my bank and Bank of America being the bank that I transferred the money through. And, and, um, so he, the, this bank branch manager told me that I had caught everything and that it was fine. That you were on time. Yeah, I remember. That I was, it was on like, time, yeah. You are like, the money didn't arrive yet. And I asked him and I was like, so what do I do with the money now? And he's like, well, the fraud department will claim it for you because you can't take it. The fraud department's going to come claim it from Bank of America when Uncle you put Sam's the claim in. Get it. <laughs> yeah. So then we run back to SunTrust and we tell the same SunTrust guy that we just took the money from and we're like, hey... Hey, um, you know, I was just here and he's like, yeah, you got to file like a scam, for, like scam charge. And I yeah. was like, but the money's over there. Can I, can you just go get it? And they're like, you need to go talk to the fraud department. I'm like, okay. So I go and do it through the corporate shit, which never works. <laughs> yeah, fuck. Never works. Because these, were, these were also disgusting. local banks, local banks. Like they're not corporate banks. They were local banks. Yeah. And so I do all that and I get the, you declare fraud, like you you declare fraud fraud report. Yeah. Yep. Whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Life goes on. Um, all of this, my account, then the check bounces that they gave me the check where tell me about the check. So then, oh yeah. How come Okay, so there was a check of $5,000 because you can't just like false, like make up a check, you know, um, through all of this, my dad was Googling and looking up because he was figuring out through the scam as well. Mm. And he was Googling the Shout glass company. Shout out to company. your dad if he's listening. Yep. Love you, dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was Googling the glass company of Lincoln and there was a phone number on it. So obviously he called it and he's like, why are you sending my daughter money for this job and whatever? And right. the guy, he talked to this, this owner of the glass company and he basically explained that um, one of his old employees had uh, run away with a bunch of checks of his like of wow. his like corporate checks and Damn. he joined the scam and now they're using his fraud checks to write all these checks and ca- so get us to cash them so that we are like us being the um, potential employees we right. being the middlemen and now the bank comes after me for the money and not for the person who wrote the check so what I'm hearing is like they send the check that they know is going to bounce, but it's going to mm-hmm. clear because good standing because with the bank. Because it clears which because is I got good standing st- with the bank. Like, let me tell you, we're in 2021. That's the most stupid fucking. You put so many security measures for so many other things, but <laughs> you will like accept a 
a, a check that came from an account that's closed. The guy obviously closed the account so people yep. wouldn't be able to take the money yep, from him from the glass the company. The money still clears. The money clears. You take it out in cash so it's untraceable. You go deposit the cash into another business account and then they probably close everything and fucking take your money and, you, and then you're left in $5,000 debt with the bank. Yep. So my dad called this guy and he explained all that. And now we're like, oh shit, this check's going to bounce. We got to get this money back. Yeah. And so we go back to Bank of America. Like Dude, It went from like we went job back, opportunity. It went to from like, job opportunity to, oh my God, like my, debt. my, my credit and my like financial standing is about to take a dive. If I don't catch, if I don't do something about it, Holy shit. like huge dive, what a, what a, what a dive. even more than this whole year of being unemployed. Yeah. Granted, no, no, it would have like, even more than that. Yeah. And so like my dad and I went back to Bank of America to try and like, we're like, Hey, can we just take the money and bring it back to Suntrust, put it in my account so yeah. that there's no, and he's like, no, you've got to wait till the fraud department comes and claims it. And we're like, okay, sure. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. We're trusting this guy. He helped us so much. And so we go back and we go about our business. My account gets closed. My only checking account in my dad. This was my checking, my first first checking account and my only checking account at the time. And Dang. it went into a five thousand dollar deficit. <laughs> Everything went into red. No, it's not five thousand dollars. You had some money. Mm. The little money that you had left on there. Mm, I had four dollars. <laughs> and then they took my savings down. I thought you had like two hundred at least. No, I had four dollars <laughs> and I had ninety-eight dollars in savings. Okay, yeah. So there was nothing like really bucks. to much lose. Yeah. Anyway, they closed my account. They just closed it off as a yeah, yeah, scam right, right. mark, but they still need that money back at some point. Hopefully the departments will still work that out. Right. Anyway, um, so my accounts get closed and now I have no way to buy anything at all. Right anywhere you have absolutely no i have account, absolute, no like my, card, all my credit no cards nothing. that i have are all maxed out because of this past year of being unemployed God so damn. i have to use all my credit cards this year and so i can't use them now because i haven't been able to pay them off and now the only checking account which was also linked to my parents my only checking account where they could also provide me money is gone closed and Jeez. so we go to open up a new one and they're like nope no, no, you you have a scam account. You can't open another one. I'm like, how am I supposed to be a functioning citizen of how society? How am I supposed to get back from this? If like... I can't buy anything with a debit card, cash is dead now. And how am I even supposed to acquire cash? <laughs> yeah, how am I supposed to collect it? How am I supposed to acquire cash <laughs> if I do a job? Like, what, <laughs> like, what do I you put mean it? you're not going to let me open it? So then I go over. And I'm like, let me see if I can open an account with Bank of America. But I do it online because Bank of America does it online. Yeah. And I do it online. And they're like, yeah, open an account. Great. Great. Fabulous. <laughs> they let me open an account. They sent me statements. And then they're like, oh, no, we're not sending you a debit card. <laughs> no debit card for you. I've, I've tried. They tell me still no debit card. So, like, so now no, I'm like no, excited. No. I have a Bank of America account. But didn't but, you deposit money but, into it? But I opened it putting nothing <laughs> in. So I'm like, oh, well, now I have something to put something in. I had two freelance jobs that I did. So I put some money in from my Venmo into this new Bank of America yeah, account. Yeah, finally, you got a place to get exactly. paid. Exactly. <laughs> and I requested a debit card. And I'm like, great, I'm going to get a debit card. I'll have all this, like, 300 whatever bucks it was from the jobs. And I'll just have some money to spend finally. And then no debit card shows up and they put the money in the account. And now they're telling me, we've decided to close your account for reasons undisclosed. But yet Damn. I still have access to looking at the account. The account is still actually open. Yeah. They've sent me numerous like You've taken the money out out of it, right? No. Every time I try, it bounces back in. They won't let me remove any of that money because I've tried putting it in different places and okay. wait a couple days and it does it and then go a couple days and then it bounces back into Bank of America. They won't let me take that money out. That that original 
$300 from those two jobs that yeah. I put in there is still there like still there it won't let me take it out i don't have a debit card to take it out i don't have any access to this account aside from my mobile viewing as far as i'm concerned bank of america has five thousand three hundred dollars that actually belongs to you well at least bank of america is withholding at least 300 of my own money and at least five thousand supposedly allegedly money. we're not uh not you know we don't maybe get we're not being scammed by only one <laughs> anyway um, i mean so they, they're telling me like, yeah, open an account, but you can't have a debit card. But yeah, put money in, but you can't fucking put it in. This is the funny part. You can and deposit like, as much money as you want. You just cannot take it out. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> um, cool. Of course. This is banking. So, like, what are, we, what are we expecting? So, yeah. Um, so now what? Like, are you in debt to the bank still? Technically, yes. Like, are you supposed to pay those $5,000 back? That's what I understand. That's what I understand so far. Like... Technically, at this point, yes, I am still supposed if to. If you ever want to open an account so, in that bank, right? Grant. Okay, so another update is we let this go for a month because we know that the corporate fraud and scam departments take forever. But they also told you that and they, they would... told me yeah. th that it was fine. They yeah. told me they froze the account. They told me everything would be fine. They told me the money would go back. And that the banks in, would handle it, right? And that the banks and the fraud departments of the banks would handle it. So they told me to relax. They told me not to do anything they told me to let everybody else handle it so i'm like okay cool cool we'll just hang out I'll just, yeah i'll hang out and now what it was like a month and a half ish maybe two months later yeah. right so my grandfather passed away unfortunately rest in um, peace rest in peace that's how but we inherited cheddar his cat which is how we got our beautiful... You can pick her up. You can try and pick her up. No, I don't want to. She doesn't she's like... She's mean. She's not mean. She's not mean, she's man. Not she's mean. the she's nicest just... soul. She just doesn't like being handled. She doesn't like being held. Come here, baby. No, she doesn't. You can bring the, you can you can bring the treats at the end. At the end, we'll bring the treats. You if you can want... see her over there. She's if you fine. want, stick till the end and we'll like, you know, we'll like present anyway, her a little bit better. So... Tell me about it. So we inherited this Cheddar. Time, we inherited Cheddar. And um, when... My parents get back. They're like, you need to check on that account to make sure that like you can, you're like, um, basically my parents were like, we need to open another account so that you can spend money and like have an account, but we need to make it joint because obviously I'm broke now and I don't have any money and I need something. That Your parents, my parents were like, let's roll one when that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Basically, you said let's make a joint. <laughs> my parents wanted to make a joint account, <laughs> a joint account. And, um, Basically, what we were concerned about is if we open a joint account, were, was SunTrust going to come after the money that we put in there to right. pay off the debt? Right. Which they can, except only if it's my money only. Right. But since you have a joint account, it's but not only your money. But since I have a money. joint account, it's my dad's money as well, right. and they can't take That's it. That's smart. That's smart. So anyway, um, we went back to Bank of America because I called the SunTrust fraud department. And I was like, hey, I just wanted to check on the status of my fraud claim. And the lady's like, oh, well, you owe the bank. And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm like, they're supposed to be getting the money back from Bank of America. I can, I can go get it. It should be there. Yeah. And she's like, no, um, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do. Like, uh, the money has to be paid by somebody. And this is telling me that the money was never stopped. Right. And I'm like, wait a minute. Okay. And she's like, there's nothing you can do. You're going to have the to guy pay. told you that the, they and granted, stopped and no, that this, he had frozen the account where the, at the money was supposed to arrive. Mm -hmm. That's what they said that they, they froze the account because mm -hmm. it was a bank of America account. It was or, a bank of America account. And right. They were, they told me that they were able to freeze the account from, from the funds entering. Right. So then where are the funds? So then where are the funds, right? So then when I asked if the funds could be taken by me, which yeah. technically if they never went into that account, they should have they were yours. with me. Yeah. So I talked, like, obviously I went talk to the lady at SunTrust on the corporate line. And um, we, my dad and I went back to the Bank of America a month and a half, two months later. Yeah. 
and we try to enter and the lady this lady comes out and we're like we just want to speak to the branch manager dennis because he's the guy that handled it and she's like oh dennis was the temporary branch manager i'm the branch manager. you know i have to bleep out that name every single time right sorry <laughs> that's okay it's fine <laughs> And they just, don't, I'm not taking they don't chances. know what, sin, what city it is. I bleep all names of stuff that involves a scam of five thousand dollars. Oh well, you should have told me to just. That's okay. No, 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 no. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. You anyway. can keep saying it. I'll bleep it out. Anyway, um, so this lady told me that our original banker was no longer our banker, and she said that he was the temporary branch manager, and he was never the permanent one. Right. Which. One, why didn't he say that when I talked to him? <laughs> Two. He was acting like big boss, you know. <laughs> where's the money? Like, and really, so I, like, where I'm is the money? I'm speaking to this actual branch manager. I'm like, okay, so I have to kind of tell her a brief, brief bit of this story, a summary. And she's like, oh, well, from what it seems is like you, she asked, um, she's like, do you, did you get a deposit confirmation slip when you deposited the money? I was like, yeah, I don't have it with me, but like, I, she's like, but did you get it? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, the money went through. And I was like, no, 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 no. What do you mean? And I'm, I'm like, she, they told me that they stopped it. And she's like, no, no. If you received a deposit slip, the money went through. And I was like, but that's impossible. Like, he told me that the money was stopped. Yeah. Well, it's a deposit and not a transfer. Mm -hmm. So and, why would he tell you that the money was, or not that and, the money was stopped, that the account was frozen? Well, what, that means that the money is probably in that frozen fucking account. Mm -hmm. Probably. And so this lady told me that um, our, that uh, temporary branch manager should have never told me that the money was stopped he Broke. should have never told me that's so shitty. that the money was frozen and that the account was frozen and that everything was fine he should have never told me that because now it's a month later and there's no way to even try and recover the funds because it was cash it was liquid god damn like it it was physical and it's gone like i don't know like nobody even knows where it is at this point Shit. at all yeah so she basically told me that i need to talk to the fraud departments again and just make sure that SunTrust isn't going to take money from any future accounts of mine. That's so dumb. Mm -hmm. And this is all because I thought I got a job. Because I thought I got a job. I mean... After a year of unemployment, after graduation, I thought I got a job and somebody took advantage of my broke ass self. I was going to say, it's shitty that my they My broke played, ass self. They played on the fact that people are very desperate especially in like graphic desperate design especially in graphic design which is like a very populated you know mm, not <laughs> market. so much it's more so the young young yeah, like entry level entry level yeah everybody was looking for an entry level and they're like oh we're going to offer you like good money good stuff we're going to send you a check <laughs> so you are like oh dang great they sent me money they should be legit and yeah, no, I just, I think that it was, they're playing on the worst. And it was one of the most complex camps that I've been, not, I, I feel like not that I've witnessed, that I've been a part of, because I was there next to you in every single one of those interviews and I could have spotted it as well. But, and this, I always say it, like being a copywriter, our job sometimes is to like answer every single question that the reader is going to have next, yeah. whenever they're, you know, you're trying to sell a product. You know, they always have, we are like, oh, but I guess this product doesn't do this or doesn't do that. Like, you got to guess what the person wants to read next and answer that question. Yeah. And I think that what these people were doing was every, like you mentioned this, like every single time that you were asking a question, like, hey, why am I supposed to deposit this money? They would give you not an answer that made sense. It would be an answer that would trigger emotions in you. They would be like fear or like, oh, shit, I better treat them right because they're giving me a job. Like mm -hmm. they're trading technology, you know? Yep. And I just think that it's very shitty that somebody would do that. And I don't know, like there is a lot of scams to fall for. And I hope like people read about them, but I guess we should have read into the red flags. I mean, we could have, but it was just at the time it had been so long since anything had come along that like there was no really real reason to try and like, 
look into it and try and like poke it apart yeah. you know or like yeah. pick it apart you know yeah no there idea. was really no reason it was just like oh wow all of it seemed legit the whole process seemed the same as your process with havas yeah you know like nothing seemed wrong really right. like i sent the job offer letter to my mom and she was like looks good looks fine sign it good yeah I guess everything you, was good everybody like, saw it everybody my like my parents it. didn't see it nobody saw it until we started having to transfer money and then that's when we were like oh. well that's how your february started how did it end um because i and i'm not trying to like take away from that but like yeah where did it end because i I, so, i thought honestly that was it was a big hit for you and I, without a doubt it was like a big big it hit was a big hit for both it was a big hit but i didn't i i don't know i didn't want it to like what'd you do next yeah. i couldn't i couldn't dwell on it because it was just like you know i got i got fooled i got played and you know like it it's gonna i i guess you let them win more when you make it affect you you know when you yeah, pick up so when you true. pick yourself up and you move on like they didn't win right if they froze the account they didn't get any money they didn't right, win exactly. at all yeah no, they, didn't they didn't get anything out of me because you didn't cash up because i didn't either. cash up anything i didn't all i did was transfer the money and i so hopefully it actually was stopped and they didn't actually get to walk away with anything if they didn't walk away they actually spend money because they have to send you stuff talk correct to you and correct so in my mind i won because I caught it before I could have lost more. Yeah. Um, but um, towards the end of that, um, I talked about earlier that I was, I've been working on startups and freelances. Um, one startup that I've been working on is called Double Time Apparel. I'm working with Emily Pines. That's exciting. Who is a master's student at um, the Chicago University uh, Booth or University of Chicago booth. Um, and they are, a, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it is an athleisure company that specializes in uh, tactical comfort and um, secured storage, I'll say, for women's pants, women's athleisure wear. So um, clothes with pockets. Clothes, pants with pockets. Pants basically. with pockets. Pants what with every single pockets. woman wants. <laughs> and basically, what every woman wants is like actual pants with pockets. Yeah. Now we are still in prototype phase, so like we don't have all, an entire line yet. We're starting with bike shorts. And what are you working on as? Um. So, with this startup, I am uh, designing the brand and the entire e-commerce website and like making it as seamless as possible. And social media too, right? And social media. Yeah. Wow. Branding and social media and the e-commerce basically. That's um, crazy. And so I took it upon, so, um, this company already had a logo and already had a couple things or like obviously already had the name, a different designer did the logo and, Um, it was having a different fashion designer for the actual short or actual like product. Yeah. And when I stepped in, I took over not a rebrand, but I took over more like establishing a brand message. Yeah. Rather than just being the company with the logo, you know, it was more like a establishing a, um, a tagline kind of and um, whatever and basically i kind of just took her took emily's like vision of athleisure and style and comfort and like tactics at the same time and just kind of turned it into what we could without having any physical product just yet okay so i took all of her um ideas and illustrated them basically and kind of made the shorts a thing even though they're not a thing yet right so the shorts are in stage two prototype yeah we're waiting for the manufacturer to send us the second prototype because the first one needed changes obviously because you know that's how the process works and uh, if you want to check it out it's double time dot me and all of the illustrations all of the designs the entire website is originally made on squarespace by me love it um and 
Yeah. I mean, I don't want to give away too much because we're still in pre phases. So I don't, I can't, but really... they're looking nice. Like the sketches mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. And the, looking... even the product, sorry, the prototype, the prototype does look good. It is on our Instagram, which is also double time apparel on Instagram. And, um, we will be like debuting more as we, uh, progress, but you know, the short pro the, sh the, fashion design process takes time to perfect. And especially when we're not really uh, experts in that, and we can't do it ourselves. It's yeah. a little different. They look like perfect bike shorts for like yoga, yeah. working out, uh, just running, and running, going to hiking. like the, the grocery store. Cause you need to, cause you have so many pockets. Going out with stuff. your friends, like literally everything. It's like the, 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 the everything short, mm -hmm. right? It's the every short. The every short. Um, You're making me reveal stuff I didn't want to. Just well, it's yet. on the website. It's on the website, but... so you should check it out. And what, it, <laughs> like, this is one of the the projects that you got into. And... Yeah. So this is um, it's actually a funny story. I um, also applied to another random thing on LinkedIn, and Emily had posted it looking for a fashion designer. Yeah. Because she wanted somebody to design the shorts for her. Right. And I was like see about well let me just i just apply right. you just I tried. applied for fun because you know you, you never you gotta apply to everything otherwise like right exactly you so i just applied lateral. and she reached out and she's like oh my gosh this would be so much so much fun whatever and i was like um i'm not really a fashion designer <laughs> but from what it sounds like it um you need branding and a website so call me back when you're at that stage <laughs> and she's like okay and yeah i was like all right cool whatever and i'm like i think it was like three or four months later she called me and i was like oh shit, hey and she's like yeah i've got prototype one like in process yeah and um I could really use like your branding and your e-commerce. That's like, so cool. Oh shit. Okay. This is really a lesson to like go out there and try out. Exactly. You know, like... So like I would have never met her if I had never replied to that fashion design right. thing. Um, and so at that point we didn't have any type of prototype. We have no physical product. All we have are like sketches of a product. And she's like, we need a website. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean a website with no product? Like how am I supposed to make anything with nothing right it was a challenge it was a very big challenge um but i did have like the initial sketch of the shorts nice. and i took those and i drew a I, I drew a bunch of drawings of like a bunch of different like models i'll say i'll say so um, that was happening from like what like january right i think it was january yeah like january we until did, yeah we did sign a contract so like all of this is pro bono as of now yeah but we're, when the company starts to actually make some money <laughs> don't twist my i didn't anymore. mean to i didn't mean to <laughs> sorry uh when the company actually starts making money then i'm gonna get paid but because it's more of a startup and because she's kind of just doing this out of her apartment yeah and she's still a student like it's not a big company like i'm not gonna get paid for everything that i'm doing just yet but, but it's still like a really cool opportunity. But I've acquired such a good friendship that like, I know that everything's going to be taken care of by the time it needs to be. So like, I'm not really concerned, but. So how are you making moolah these days? So I'm making moolah these days. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds quirky when you say it. Got to give them the suspense. 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 Yeah. Like, let's get into it. Like, what are you doing for money these days? Okay. Well, again my my linkedin job searches they prevail sometimes even if they can be scams but they prevail and i applied to an art director slash junior art director position there were two different positions posted and i applied to both so it was like a slash type to this company called jacobson rost small ad agency small ad agency here in chicago with another uh office in milwaukee Wisconsin, if for those of you that don't know the cities, so check them out. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I got an email saying that they would be interested. And um, I got hired uh, as a freelance art director at Jacobson Rost. Um, right now I'm on a temporary contract, but 
Um, it's all with ideas to extend to long term. So it all just kind of depends on how things are going to work out. <clears throat> That's crazy. That's congratulations. Thank you. No, for real. When I heard that was one of the best news like this year for me. It is. It is. It's very fun. I got to kind of establish my own terms. Um, my our schedule is um, like literally hybrid. So we go in and in the office and stay remote every other day. That's crazy. That's the one thing that I never got to try. Like you're literally going some days at home. Literally some days at every the, other day office. is home and every other day is in the office. So like That's tomorrow so cool. I'm at home and Tuesday I go in the office. So like it is kind of fun, but I did explain it was kind of like tiring where like you kind yeah. of feel like you don't really get to rest much because right. like the next day you got to go to the office or like the next day, you know, like right. it's kind of just you you i kind of wish you had like two remote days and two office days and then another remote day to me it feels more like college remember because sometimes you used to have like two classes on on a day and then the other two days maybe were free exactly and that's what kind of makes it feel kind of like stressful yeah again but it's really fun um i don't know if i i don't know if i'm allowed to reveal the brands but i'm gonna reveal the types of brands yeah no just say the the um, industries (laughs) i am the uh, technically I'm the junior art director right now. Um, I think it's not really f- sure. I'm just an art director, but like I do some junior positions and I do some like senior positions, I'll say. And what are you working? Um, so in? right now I'm working on a cryptocurrency company Damn. for a social media, um, campaign. I, I gotta say it's a pretty big, so like cryptocurrency it's pretty cool. wallet and trading. It's and pretty cool. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. big, pretty big name. Up um, there. I am working for a um, Kentucky bourbon company who is trying to, uh, they're starting like a webisode series or something like that. And I'm working on some of the art direction video Kentucky bourbon of it. Company. Mm-hmm. Kentucky bourbon. Um, and what else? There's a, um, oh, there's a door company under Lowe's and Home Depot who are specializing in a special kind of door. Soundproof, right? And something like that, yeah. Something like with, something with sound, mm-hmm. yeah. And so I'm working on a new social campaign where they're trying to promote their new thing. And that's cool. Um, I've been helping up, helping out just a little bit more on like side things where like I'm not really the main person on it, but um, on uh, some car parts. Yeah. Um, like shocks and suspensions. And um, then they threw you on a bunch of accounts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They threw me in like almost like Shark Tank. But um, <laughs> Um, and then I'm there's there's a possibility there might be a theme park coming in somewhere, but I'm not Ooh, sure yet. Oh, that's and true. It's kind of cool because they kind of just that is true. Threw me in, that you know, like that's and it's weird because I mean uh, I don't even know what you're doing because of your NDA, but I know the the brands that you're working on, and I'm just excited for that. It's reason. so like, cool. God. It's it's really cool just kind of being able to go into the office and like go. I get to commute to downtown Chicago every other day oh i'm so excited every single day and i'm sorry to steal the spotlight yet again <laughs> but like worry. the fact that you go downtown makes me like wake up and go downtown with you and i go to a cafe and work as if i'd like actually be working downtown in an office and that feeling like i know how it feels for you it's so cool it's, it's like the coolest thing at first well. when you do it it's like the coolest fucking feeling to like commute in a huge city and go to work and like do the do the, do the adult grown-up shit you know it's, it's cool. the coolest thing not only like i love taking like as gross and kind of gr- like nasty as it can be i love taking the l like <laughs> like Dude, to it's not a from... bad compared to like new okay, york so like the bad. worst the worst situation i've ever had was i think i told you about it there was a like a homeless guy smoking a cigarette in the corner of the subway car. I mean, these like, m- no, but like actively smoking where like we are moving and all the doors are closed. He's starting to hotbox the hot whole box. thing. <laughs> and we're all like sitting there like, <coughs> oh, and like also everybody's wearing masks. So everybody's like also concerned about coughing. But I'm like, I literally just started wailing on coughing because I was like, I'm about to piss this guy off with six. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> And everybody just like looked at me and then because like the guy that was smoking was in my direction. Like he was om- he was almost closest to me. Yeah. And everybody looked over and nobody had the guts to say anything to him. Everybody was just kind of like yeah, rolling bro. their eyes, just like kills Ooh. COVID. You know what I'm saying? I was like, okay. <laughs> Everything kills COVID. <laughs> I, 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 look, normally I'm not bothered by it. It was just like it was stuck in my stuck in my mask <laughs> dude i mean and that was like somebody hotboxing 
an L wagon with a cigarette. Exactly. It's just like mm. is one of the reasons why you want to take the L. It's it's the beautiful Chicago ride, you know, of uh, of luck. That was like that, but that's been like my worst encounter with the subway. Like, but I mean, you've been taking the subway for less than a week, so I'm less pretty like concerned. So, like, yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, it's it's like entertaining, you know. Kind of. Unless you know it's kind of your long but, play. But like my favorite part is that like my building is um like it's not on the water, but it's like the so like there's the row of buildings that are on the water, and then there's like the one street, and then they're on the other side. So like it's right no, you, on the other side. But you stop your stop and your walk, like you walk around some of the nicest buildings in Chicago. I, like, I walk around the center, like I get stuck in tourist fucking yeah. groups when I walk home because yeah. there's so many people around. It's it's so cool. And like the people that I work with, like my CD and like my copywriter and all that are like yeah. just such cool people. Like they've done such cool things. And like the amount of like quick and easy work, kind of like how our professors at SCAD used to do, like where Emily and Duke and, right. and uh, Luke would Luke, come up yeah. with like random headlines just like out of their ass yeah, like in yeah, a yeah. second. Yeah. My CD and all like the people that I work with do that too. And I'm like, holy shit, how did you just... <laughs> How did you just do that so fast? It's just so I cool. Geek. I can't wait till I get to that point where I can just spit out a yeah. fucking amazing idea with right. nothing else in my head. Yeah. You know, you just spit out a line and it's like a fabulous line. Like so you, obviously things need to be improved, but like you're getting to work in what you actually like once studied for and to love. Like I I've, I've I seen the like the kind of jobs that you're given and then I'm, I've also you know working in the mm -hmm. advertising I've seen what other art directors were given and you're literally doing the junior and some like associate like normal art director stuff like you're doing I'm pretty cool finally things finally getting to do what I went to school for like you were handling like social media designs social and... media designs web designs like email banners banners like, like how many mock-ups and like oh my god so many mock-ups 40 mock like it's it's crazy and so I'm, many I'm things so proud to do but it's just like it is like grunt work like it's 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 like the work that i had to do at scad and like it's yeah. kind of like awakening almost because i've been kind of sitting on my ass for the past year trying to find a job and like yeah. nobody's like Well, you haven't, because you obviously like, applied to like over 300 jobs or something. Like oh, that, so. yeah, no, I just mean like sitting on my ass in the sense of work like, creating. Yeah. Because like there was no reason for me to be creating like I am now, you know, like there's no reason for me to be making 34 mock-ups for a door company like by it, Friday. By I think I don't I don't think like I don't know if you agree with me because now you now you've also experienced the agency life. Yeah. I don't feel like it's a lot of work. I just no. feel like the deadlines, the deadlines because of the bit. many, many, many reasons yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> are so fucking fucked for creatives. They're like, we want this by yesterday. And I'm like, bro, in a real world, I could get this to you in a week and everybody would be fucking alive. Everybody it's, would be just fine. Well, it's that. It's that the clients and communication. And honestly, like your agency, like Jacobson, I'm, I'm actually going to say them, Jacobs Rust, cool accounts sounds like coolest cool people accounts, cool, cool people, creatives and they work f almost seamlessly hire me yeah no, like, <laughs> but not now <laughs> later almost seamlessly they they like work through right meetings and jobs and stuff like like um i don't know my cd just it's set, he sets up things so easily for me to like cd's creative director by yeah the way. sorry for the people that don't know that don't, aren't in the ad agency world. lang my creative director you can skip this part if you don't like advertising talk <laughs> my creative okay. director comes up with i he I, well, actually i was telling you this the other day yeah what makes me so excited about my creative director is how hands-on he is yeah <clears throat> like most creative directors in ad agencies are like They tell you what to do. They give you feedback and they tell you what you need to do. And they tell you this and they look over everything and they overlook everything and they don't get to touch anything. It's usually because then there's like a senior director and a senior writer and then a exactly. mid-level and a mid-writer and, and then the, a junior. And, and there's so many other people, whereas in this small agency. In this agency, there's just the chain is more lateral right. than, than vertical. vertical. Yeah. And so it's so strange. Like my CD will like create designs with me and be like, do you like this or do you like this? I'm like, oh, wait, you design this? You did this? <laughs> like, well, wait. That's cool. You and know? it's so cool because like I get to learn not only like, design skills but i also get to learn like technical design skills from him because he's so hands-on right and that he does things in front of me or he shows me how to do things or like he um like 
does the actual designs or something like that. Like it's it's no so right. Much he cooler. designed an like he designed and animated an entire post. Like he did the job of a a designer, an art director, a motion media designer, yeah. and a strategist in one. Mm-hmm. In the matter of five minutes, in a meeting. Right. By the way, like that's true <laughs> talent. Like I look at these people it's who are like amazing skills over a short period amount of time. Just fucking impress me. It's just it's just I, incredible. It's so crazy. I, I feel like I I'm haven't been able to like sit like, down and like kind of absorb my thoughts about the job yet because I feel like everything's just been so like go 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 it's go 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 paced, and I just man. like haven't really been able to like sit down and be like. Whew. Yeah, I'm a junior wow, art I'm director an art in director Chicago. Now. Like, I'm an actual art director in Chicago now. <laughs> yeah, bro. And That's congratulations. Like, this is like you. a really reason to celebrate. <laughs> I, like, I, I how many it. people on this podcast? <laughs> I've had so many friends reach out to me, like, knowing about your situation. And we can finally say Mark has a fucking job. Well, let's. Hope no, no, no. <laughs> Even if it's a freelance job, like, it's a repeated job over time. And we hope it's going to be full time. I think it will be. I. I'm definitely sure they would be dumb not to. But either way, I am finally getting a taste of the agency life. And it's nice because it's starting off small. That's cool. And um, the people just know it's it's nice to be back in the industry in in the industry where people know what you're talking about when you go into ad yeah you know because like we went into scad and we had the scad world where we were all in scad ad and everybody knew what you meant when you said oh that fucking extra gum commercial yeah. gets me every time like everybody in ad knows what you're talking about when yeah. you say that you know, they know or the when reference. you say Sarah and Juan, you know what those are. Right. You know who those characters are. Yeah. And it's been so long since we've been in this, since, I mean, I've been in this world. Right. Because it's been almost over a year yeah, when we yeah, graduated. Yeah. It's been the last time since we were in this world. And it's so nice to be in that world yeah, again. Yeah, it's nice to be in a world where people geek over this, like, well-done commercials that are, like, just nice. Yeah. Just doesn't make you want to fucking hate And it's like I sit in the agency and I hear fucking supers repeated over and over and over and over and over again because somebody's editing a commercial and i just hear the same voiceover super over and over and over and i'm trying to blast my music and then when i blast my music my cd wants to talk to me and i'm like ah shit and it's just like uh i love it you're finally getting the experience that you were told about i miss it it's it it I get the experience I was told. So you about. feel like you're in college? Do you feel like I almost also... feel like I'm in college again? That's that's so cool. Except I'm getting paid this time so, instead of paying. So you're thinking like play, not like so much of the job, like play and like, but like serious play. Like you're like no, it's a, it's a job. No, not not like when I mean I'm play. It. I don't mean like oh, you're not taking it seriously. I mean like you're having fun, like playing around with designs, like because at the end of the day, like that's what we do as creatives. Like we kind of play around with stuff. Well, you know? yeah, I mean like when, um. So for the cryptocurrency, I was given like very broad instructions. Like I was like, they need a headline, the logo, the logo of the crypto and the logo of the company Yeah. and this and this in the banner that is this tall. Right. This tall. Like the banner that you ignore when you're on Google or when you're- The one that your ad blocker has already like- The one that your ad blocker removes and shit like that. Like- Like a banner that is 900 pixels wide and 100 (laughs) pixels tall. And they're like, design a banner. I'm like, I mean, junior art director stuff, you know, it's, it is what it is. But like, at first I'm like, I didn't, in my head, I didn't know how to design a banner because like, for some reason, I don't know why SCAD never really made us design web banners when that's like kind of the main thing agencies do. Well, it's because... And I know it's more of a simple thing and it's more of like a... It's like a change format, but same principles. Of, like, But it's still something I would have liked to like have dabbled in just a little yeah. bit before I did it yeah. because I had no idea what I was doing when I got in it. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like what we learn is heavily creative side and mm-hmm. ideation. Yeah. And I, not to say that I didn't learn a lot of executions. But once I did start an agency, just like you did, I felt like the deliverables and the executions, I I wasn't accustomed. Like I had to use my knowledge Wildly different. to new types of formats. This is a, no, that was police. That was another one. Sorry. Wildly another different deliber- yeah. deliverables. No, different though. deliverables and, and, and just different life. Right. So that that's that's exciting. But man. I'm really excited for you. It's so exciting to finally like my, my Photoshop can't keep up anymore. And like, it's, it's, 
upsetting that it can't but like it's almost relieving that like i get to do so much work that like my photoshop is about to crap out because it's like working so hard yeah to keep up with me (laughs) this is dope and i'm also really impressed with like my skills because i told you i've no you're incredible like you've got so much knowledge in so short that and i've been faking it till i make it till with with uh, like creative cloud shit you know yeah creative cloud shit i told you um sophomore year of college i like took that um i took that thing online mm-hmm. the class online like the um the uh computer class where we learned how yeah. to work yeah, all yeah, of yeah, the yeah. creative cloud things i took that class online instead of in person so i didn't learn anything <laughs> so then when we got to like add classes and we had to do specific illustrator specific indesign specific photoshop and uh after effects stuff i'm like what what is that when did we learn this <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about when did i learn this when was i supposed to learn this and so like it's i'm still faking it till i make it <laughs> like i'm no you're not some like things i feel like you got so many skills throughout this yeah. month that maybe we're not specific for your art direction but we're like dealing with clients dealing mm-hmm. with workload dealing with like ideation when there's mm-hmm. no clear briefing like we s- at agencies, we get kind of like sugarcoated because we have people that kind of do some jobs for us. Yeah. Of and where were you going? When you went on your own, you had to do those jobs for yourself. And I think like you're now bringing like what you learned to what you're learning in the agency yep. and putting it together. And I'm like, oh my God, Mark's like a, an incredible creative. <laughs> like you're creating a lot per day, like a lot. And I know that from when you go from freelance to uh, an agency, it's like, oh, you do that much work every day. Like what? You know, it's a big, it's a, big it's thing. a little bit difficult. It's especially hard because you. now just because I started this full-time thing, I'm still doing the startup yeah. and the other two startups that we're doing. And so it's starting to get a little hard to balance and manage. But once we kind of establish a, uh, a final schedule, um, I think I'll get a good handle on it. Um, but overall, I'm finally getting the agency experience, and who knows? Maybe, maybe it'll be for good. Maybe it won't. I think it will. I think this is a an incredible turn of events in 30 days, and I'm happy Me to too. hear. And uh, I think this is like, what was there something else that had happened in between? I think these are the two main things from you. That's pretty much it. So now you got a job. I got a job. Freelance, and I got even scammed. though it's a freelance, you got scammed. But you got scammed and first, and then, you, and we got a kitty cat. So that's yours, right? That's mine. Yeah. Um. Well, I, I want to go really quick into mine, but before we do that, um, I want to give everybody a break, including us. So let's just take a small break, and we'll continue right back. <laughs> And we're back. Hello. Listen, uh, Mark, thank you for sharing that with us. I mean, like, life is pretty fucking crazy on your end. And I think that it's been crazy for everybody around the fucking world by now. But on my end, um, the last the last announcement that I made is that on November 2020, um, I wasn't let go. I, we, the, the company, the agency that I worked for and I just parted ways. We just, the contract finished and we didn't extend it and all cool, all fine. Um, I decided to become a freelance copywriter. Not that I wasn't until then. I was still a freelance copywriter working with an agency, but then I decided to work on my own as in like get my own clients, do my own jobs, you know, go out and, and do it on my own, you know, cause, um, I had a year of my, my work permit. So I, why not, you know, and it worked dude. first month. I I had enough money to be profitable. And I was, I think I was a mixture of luck and a lot of skill and just good sales skills. And I thank God for the, for, for SCAD for that. Cause if not, I don't know what I would done, but as of this year, I been working on developing different skills, like social media marketing, and marketing in general i'm an advertising graduate and people are like well that's the same shit no it isn't advertising is like a small part of marketing and so i've been trying to learn marketing i've been working on uh my friend's startup which is called rolling global 
uh, Rolling Global Digital, actually. Um, it is a logistics software company, and I'm working as their marketing manager and, and kind of doing a lot of jobs for now because we're at the beginning, but soon, you know, going to start building up a team for that. Um, so I got into like a bunch of clients that are that are paying me. But of course, at a certain point, I had to uh, I wanted to go back back home, you know, because um, I'm originally from Romania and my parents were not in Romania. And due to COVID, I couldn't go see them last year. So around February, end of February, I would say, no, beginning of February, I bought my tickets to go back to Romania on an airplane. And I checked the internet and said, you know, um, governments and embassies were not issuing visas anymore, but travel was was fine. You had to quarantine when I reached Romania and I would have to quarantine when I get back to the United States. Well, the months passed, January, February, March, and as this month passed, different opportunities came out for me and um, different job opportunities as well. And I said, no, I wanted to do it on my own. I wanted to do it on my own. And there was a lot of stuff that was uncertain for me this, this month, just because um, of, you know, my status here and everything, just being in the United States, trying to be uh, like, have a job and everything. It's, it's, it's hard. And I, when the day arrived to go back home, I turns out that I couldn't. So after a year and a half, I thought I was going to go back home to see my parents and fly, but Apparently, I couldn't. Um, upon a second look and a talk with the immigration at the airport, they told me that I was essentially not going to be able to come back to the United States if I were to leave right now because of the travel ban. So um, even though you know I had like my visa here, like I'm completely legal to be here and I'll enter back on a visa that I own, yeah. I wouldn't be able to come back just because of the COVID travel ban, which is, you know, whatever, yeah, everything. Every country decides its own rules. Yeah. So that was the big hit because a year and a half... Later, I wanted to see my parents, my mom, my dad, my sister. And, you know, just like a lot of other people around the world wanted to see their, their families and, yeah. and I couldn't. So that was, that was the big part that sucked for me. But mm-hmm. apart from that, I was just like the main number one thing that I've been working on is just learning about marketing, learning about new skills that are going to be useful for me in the future and trying to give myself time because... I feel like there's a lot of freelancers out there who do, don't give themselves enough time. And yeah, like I don't have much money to spend on clothes and maybe on a lot of things, but I have enough money to spend on like good food, um, a place to live in mm-hmm. and I can take care of my health. Yeah. So I, I feel like those things are there and I'm, I'm able to like make my own money, like on my own without an yeah. agency. And that's pretty, pretty incredible. And I know it's not about the money, but it's about the money being made in a way that I love. Like I love mm-hmm. writing. I love copywriting. Of course. And I maybe dedicate 10% of my time to it. I'm functioning at 10% of my, of my capacity with like copywriting and making enough money to survive a month. Like it's definitely a, a great idea for me to do it and a, a great opportunity for me to do it because of I can go and take care of my other ideas. Yeah. So talking about that one of the huge things that i've been working on and that some of you might might have been listening to is creative smoothie which as opposed to this podcast is a more structured podcast with with themes and and questions and stuff like premeditated uh basically creative smoothie is a podcast for highly creative people um i mainly talk to people that are in the creative careers so people that are you know, working in high positions in advertising, also in product designing and marketing. Uh, but we're going to talk to like photographers, artists, painters. Um, it's a podcast for people who feel like they need a daily dose or a weekly dose of inspiration. And if you haven't already, you should go check it out. I'm not trying to plug it too much or anything, but you should go check it out. It might be your jam, might be not, but check it out. It's There's Creative some Smoothie. Cool people on there. There's some really cool people we've had. First episode is Emily Sander. She's the vice president at um, Mullen Low, an agency in an ad agency in New York. She's worked like McDonald's, the NFL, Game of Thrones. Like I'm talking big name. Um, second episode is with Duke, uh, Duke Greenhill. He's worked in two U.S. presidential campaigns. He's worked with LVMH, like Louis Vuitton. He's like turned Tiffany's to digital. Like I'm talking a man that literally changed the the, the ad world. 
episode three has uh give it all away. max <laughs> no like you know just so they can know episode three has max like a product designer and episode five has somebody who um has worked in the ad agency and can talk, talk a bit about the less known side of the ad world that it's maybe not so glamorous so i think you should check it out so i was working on that and i don't know if people know but on creative smoothie and this is not something that i'm proud of but this is something that's good of i'm basic it's a basically one man thing like apart from the 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 logo and some of the graphics which were designed by margaret um i record plan contact i contact people i reach out to them i book them I record the videos, I record the episodes, I post-produce them, upload them, convert them, promote them, pay for the promotion. Like everything is done by by me and by myself. And at least for the first season, which is going to be 10 episodes, I'm, I'm planning on doing that, which you're going to be the, the last episode. You're going to be episode 10 Ooh. to close out the season. Um, for the first episode, I'm doing it by myself because I want to learn about the craft of podcasting. But... After that, I would love to continue with the team and turn Creative Smoothie into something that's a, a team project because I said that I wanted to start Creative Smoothie because I wanted to turn it into a community. And I don't think you can make a community by yourself. You need people for that, right? Of course. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to look out. So if you want to be part of a, an amazing podcast, you know, just hit me up. I already know that I'm going to be working with incredible people. Um, apart from that, yeah, like I... I it's going to be a few rough months for me because I know I couldn't exactly go home and take care of the stuff that I need to take care of, but I am here. I am in the United States and it's uh it's an, op- it's an incredible opportunity. I've been working with 40. I, I worked with since November, I worked with more than 50 clients, 50 different clients. And that's incredible. And I've learned so much from freelancing and I just think that there's a lot of people out there who are also freelancers and they would benefit from like either just doing a side hustle after their job or just yeah. working. And if so, like I'll just say, just hit me up, send me a message. I can help you out. Like I've been living off of that. Like I'm not fronting. Like I'm, I, this is not a BS. Like I have no income other than what I do from writing and I'm alive and I'm eating and this is a pretty good i have a fucking cat like do you think i not make money just a little bit so oh, yeah. hit me up if you want to have a fucking cat too um but On that note as well if any of y'all branded ones need stickers for any reason oh yeah plug time okay so what do we have we have stickers we have branding like a brand identity everything Logo, logos anything you want from her like best illustrations but, as well but mostly stickers right now just stickers right now <laughs> just stickers right now and on my side you have entire copywriting like any I can, type of stickers i can write any type of stickers even provocative ones we've seen on yeah. your red bubble oh yeah yeah Go i just gotta search. mark them as a mature so that i don't get banned but exactly and don't worry i'm working on getting uh independent sticker selling going very soon you should i'm going to it's going to happen we just need soon. the orders so start ordering do you want independent do if you it, not want to pay big corporations money you don't want to pay red bubble for all the fees that they have to charge you because y'all don't even want to know the margin that i receive <laughs> so if y'all want to actually support me support me now and then i can afford to get get a machine where i can make it all cheaper for you guys i can make it all cheaper all of them all of the prices will be cheaper (laughs) and on this side you know copywriting um (laughs) services if you need anything written at all it's gonna be the same price like do you need do you need a, a letter to your boss because you're wanting a raise that's a persuasive letter that's copywriting letter that's a vlad letter do you want an email written? That's a Vlad email. Do you want a website written? That's a Vlad website. Where's the cat? All right. Are you ready? I have the final. Don't don't touch the microphone too much because it makes a lot of noise. Sorry. Are you ready for the final section of today's episode, which is the crazy stories that I brought sure. for you? Um. If you like, lay it on me. Would you rather wait un- until the groceries no, wait? Lay it on me. We got two stops left. All right. So, 
The first crazy story that I read today that I wanted to bring to you was, <laughs> do you remember the fucking Suez Canal and the boat that got stuck like a week ago? Yeah. Okay, we've all seen that shit, yeah. okay? It's yeah. old news. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. what's new about the old news mm-hmm. is that there in Egypt, there was a there was a lot of like news going around and people pushing it on social media, like fake news. Mm-hmm. And the fake news was that, um, so the, the, the news is that Egypt's first female, uh, first female ship captain fears for her career after she was blamed for falsely uh, blockading the Suez Canal when she was aboard a vessel 200 miles away. So basically they're accusing this female captain, the Egypt's first female ship captain, of 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 blocking the Suez Canal when she was 200 miles away and it's like I've seen some of the comments from like basically they're like memes and hate hate posts on Twitter and Egypt and stuff it's like basically saying like of course it was gonna be a woman who was gonna block it and like stuff like you know women can drive women can park like how how, how? <laughs> she was 200 miles away she how? was the first women captain from Egypt how? to Across the Suez Canal, by the way. How? Yeah, so she was 200 miles away in Alexandria. How did she get the blame when she wasn't even on the boat? Dude, no, it's crazy. I can can understand blaming any person on the boat. No, it's crazy. It started like fake news. Do you know like somebody starting a rumor? How can you blame somebody not even on the damn boat? Dude, newspapers started picking it up and like were accusing her and allegedly her. like doing yeah that's and she was like dude i'm gonna lose my fucking job over this shit she was 200 miles away that is ridiculous bro that's crazy fuck that i don't have anything more to say than fuck that all right that is sexist as shit this the second i agree the second the second story that i brought up for you um and by the way i want to make this one usually like more like longer but just because of how much we had to catch up this today like we had to cut this a bit short um the second one is that a couple a couple vandalized a four hundred forty thousand dollar painting in south korea after they mistook it for an interactive exhibit and i actually brought up the page because i wanted to show you what they did so the painting was by john one an american graffiti artist and basically what happened is there there was a painting by this John one in the gallery in um I don't know where it was I think it was in it was in Seoul uh in Seoul in South Korea there was a painting by this guy and he exhibited it with a bucket of paint and a brush inside it in front of it so this couple went in and thought oh this is an interactive like (laughs) this is an interactive piece where people can contribute and they (laughs) They got a paint, they dipped it in paint, and then they just like brushed twice on the on the canvas. And then they were arrested later on because they were caught on like surveillance cameras. Like they were arrested because they obviously fucking vandalized like a four hundred forty thousand dollar like piece of art. And later on, they spoke to the artist and whatever. And I don't think like the artist didn't press charges or anything. They were like released because the gallery owner was like they like. He was like, I understand how these people might have mistaken this for like a, you see, like for something. Yeah, it also says that John One's graffiti artwork pictured on April 2nd, which was two days ago, with a barrier and do not touch sign that were added after a couple painted marks on it. Yeah, so so this is like one of those stories where you go into a place and you're like, why is there a sign that says do not touch? That's exactly fucking why. Because somebody decided to paint. (laughs) I mean, okay, so imagine if you looked at this, you're going to put it on the screen, right? Yeah, no, 100%. Anyway, imagine you looked at this and there's no barrier and there's no sign. Like, I'm going to also, I mean, depending on if it's actually in like a art museum. It was like in a mall exhibit. If it's in a mall exhibit, on display at a mall, I completely understand. Yeah, because at a mall, you'd be like, "Oh yeah, it's something fucking fun." If like, there's let's... paint laying there, at, like, and there's no ropes blocking yeah. it, I would be like, "Oh shit, maybe yeah. it's like an interactive yeah, thing." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I would think the same thing. Yeah, but, but they arrested these bitches. That's stupid for them arresting them. They right. just but they like, didn't know. Like, what the fuck are you gonna do? Like, you don't know yeah. why. And then they explained, and then they released them, and then the artist. Okay. Now they're talking about maybe potentially restoring it, or maybe not. 
okay but like you should have put ropes up to begin with because yeah you take the ropes down and that just looks like a workstation yeah and it looks they're... exactly like a fucking workstation mm -hmm. so like it invites people to come in yeah so that was anyway, the second one that i wanted to show lame. you about um and the... sucks for the uh sucks for the artist sucks for the people sucks for everyone kind of yeah <laughs> it does but, suck uh, yeah okay Move and on. next topic the last one's gonna get like political but I, it's not that it's i mean it's not political but you can make it political and it's like the way well, it's very fucking political actually okay so can't the cancel culture and and can't stuff. Oy, oy, oy. so until now majority of people that were considered liberal was canceling were canceling stuff that was mm -hmm. more conservative like whatever bullshit okay i disagree with it fucking sue me i don't give a shit Fuck, fucking cancel this um and the other side <laughs> which is you know uh the conservatives now are saying well you know what fuck you we're gonna start canceling some shit as well and it's just fucking hilarious that everybody's like oh i don't like this you sh nobody else should fucking listen to this <laughs> nobody else should fucking hear this shit Nobody else should enjoy this shit because it's gonna damage the country. I was like, bro. And listen, I understand that certain things maybe shouldn't be shown to kids. Maybe some things shouldn't be uh, displayed. But I think that everyone has a, a freedom in like, oh, I'm not gonna watch this. I don't want to watch this. You know what? Yeah. I disagree with the fact that there's a, there's a character on the fucking Looney Tunes who is very pushy about um getting with the girl that he wants to get which is pop pop pew -pa or whatever Pepe -pa pew um but that's it i mean i don't know okay, fucking so i'm like, and i don't give a shit about like i'm i'm in the middle i'm not left i'm not right i just think both sides are pretty dumb i agree fully i 100 percent agree i think cancel culture is way too impactful it's the way it, it affects way too many people. I so like there are some instances where cancel culture is like very appropriate and very effective. Like, you know, Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, yeah. You know, no. those were rumors. No, and there's then, definitely shit that shouldn't be like, like glamorized, right? Exactly. And and like, like promoted. But like our recent I think our most recent discussion was about Lil Nas X and like his music video. I haven't even watched it. Yeah. I just know that he's being canceled for using like satanic innuendos or satanic visuals or whatever. Yeah. And he's being canceled for it because he's what? Black? Gay? Yeah. Flaunting it? Like, who gives a shit? Billie Eilish did the same thing like right. a few months ago with her. I don't even know what song, but she did something about being a fallen angel. She had like right. black wings and she was pertaining to the devil and nobody said shit about that but now because the black queer guy wants to do it everybody's like got a problem with it i think I it was like think... the narrative was like he was a kid's kind of dude a, a younger generation's kind of dude and then yeah he started pushing something that's like okay like i i'm not gonna disagree or agree like i think it's like uh, whatever satanic shit like you know whatever do you think but i, I don't know like I, I understand but it's stupid at the same time that they're not like I don't give a shit. Why would you want to can like it's not that oh they didn't want to cancel this person, but they canceled this person. It's like I understand you being against people promoting something. Yeah. Right? Because it goes against your own beliefs. But one of your beliefs involves the fact that everyone has right to their own beliefs. Well, it's not only so that, but... that what the fuck are you talking about? But it's not only that, but cancel culture has fed this thought that just because yes we have the right to not support something yeah we also have the right to tear somebody else down right and, and we, we also have, have the right some... to tell that anybody that says fuck cancel culture like i fuck cancel culture he's like oh you're a racist oh you're like bro i'm not even from here what are you talking about i'm an immigrant like what are you what are you talking like it's 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 uh i think people like to categorize other people and i think the cancel culture is like oh Everybody feels too entitled. Too entitled. And I, I feel like what it is, is that people are like feeling well about themselves when pointing out the wrong in something, somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's like, 
Mm, you know, like in school when you you can interpret, like when you got in, like your teacher interprets a line or a paragraph in a book, like, and then he opened the window and it's like, this means that, you know, he opened himself to new opportunities. No, bitch, it means he opened the window. It's the same here. It's like, people are looking for metaphors and stuff sometimes to like cancel. It's like, oh, there's sexual innuendos. And like, okay, sometimes there is. But sometimes they're like, you're looking for for problems, you know? But it's also and like- you know what? It's hilarious now that the other side is trying to do the same thing. It's like, you know what? Fuck you guys. I don't want you to go eat there, 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 or there. <laughs> well, Fuck yeah. these places. I mean, like back to <laughs> Lil Nas too. Like he... um it's it's the same thing as like everybody has the right to whatever they want to watch whatever yeah, dude. and he he was like well screw you guys you guys don't have to let your kids watch me if yeah. that's the problem like if exactly. he was a childhood like if he was a child like star or a child role model then like it's the child's fault and the parents fault and the like, adults fault and yeah. the adults fault the parents fault for like allowing yeah. them to watch that if that's going to be a problem you know and and i'm also to the to your point and adding to that is like okay well even as an adult let's say fuck the kids you don't even care about the kids just as an adult you don't want people to like be spreading the the message of satan or whatever okay instead of saying oh this shouldn't be here because it spreads around you should be saying, well, why the fuck does it seem that we don't have control over what spreads around and what we are consuming every day and what everybody's exposed to? Because you're asking, oh, well, don't do this because millions of people around the world are going to see it and they're going to get a message. And you're like, you're talking about the fucking problem in the sentence and you're not even realizing it. You're like, oh, millions of people are going to see this and get affected by it. You're not questioning why that is possible you're questioning why that particular message that you don't like is possible yep. because when it comes to like i'm not gonna mention anything because i don't want to be i don't want to piss people off like I, I i just don't care like this is not my intent i don't i don't i don't really give a shit but i don't want to piss people off but it's like when it's your message and it confirms your bias you're like oh yeah this yep. is it this yep. is the shit i yep. love it yep but when it disagrees with you you're like mm, no fuck that cancel it I don't give, I don't know. It's uh, homophobic, transphobic. It's like, I know, dude, maybe it's just like, and I also believe that that was what what I was thinking about. And people are comparing sometimes what's happening in the United States to like old Nazi times. And I, people like that deserve a slap. But the cancel culture can be compared to book burning. Mm -hmm. Book burning has been a huge ritual for many decades that started in like one of the earliest book burnings was like you know in china and and, like early chinese empire like you know what used to happen in china when people um disagreed with a certain ideology and you're like no you're going to believe what we want you to believe they'll be like well you obviously cannot read these books because then you question what we told you to believe yeah so they'll fucking burn it Mm -hmm. it sounds the fucking same yep agreed you're like oh i don't want you and everyone's gonna be well well how's rape uh, and popular pew goods com- like gonna teach people about it's gonna teach them that's probably not good it's gonna be an opportunity to go it's funny but like it's not supposed to be like that you know like it's not gonna be like that yeah. it's it gives an opportunity to learn from the bad and it's, exactly if not what do you you're not even gonna know what's right or wrong like i understand that exposure to to bad stuff it's gonna make you like can can make people fear that you're gonna be like also turning into that but we're exposed to people who smoke like every day. Like we're, we're, there's so many ways that we're getting harmed every day. And I feel like being able to learn what was before us can help us a lot more than like canceling it. Yeah. And I mean, like I justify it all the time with like my parents in situations. It's like, how am I ever going to learn if I don't experience something myself exactly you know so like how are these kids gonna learn that pepe le pew is this toxic type of character if they never see he's also never represented as a like desirable character or anything like he never gets with anybody but it's not only that it's like if you're saying that like you can only portray these toxic people as horrible monsters then you're tricking your kids into being naive yeah because no more villains because ever. then they're gonna fall for a character like pepe Le Pew, who's gonna woo them with tricks and, yeah. and funny words and stuff like that and then they're gonna end up in like a situation that's like yeah exactly 
what they didn't want. You know, exactly. like they're never going to learn if they don't experience it or they don't see it firsthand. Exactly. Yeah. I'm never going to learn how to just defend myself in Chicago until I experience it firsthand. Obviously, like yeah. obviously, I know how to defend myself. But right. That's no, but it's it true. was just like an, it was just like a, a, a an example, right? An example. No, and I just think it's like I don't know. It just pisses me off. But at the same time, it doesn't because at the same time, I realize that I still have the ability to watch and consume and buy whatever the fuck I want. Whatever the fuck, you know, I am being told by ads and shit to buy because yep. we all know, like, ah, come on, I work in the industry. I'm telling you, like, it's not your decision. <laughs> it's not It's not completely your decision. Like, ultimately, it's your decision, but the main thinking, it's, it's not yours. Uh, I mean, honestly, this was a, that, this was it. Like, the rest of the stuff was pretty, pretty small. And I, I think that we, we talked on for a while. And I, I, I think, like, I think I don't know. It's been 17 episodes plus a few on the other ones. Like it's been a, a like almost maybe 30 episodes of podcasts I've been recording in in, in short so amount of time. Exciting. That's not a lot, you know. But it's, it's a exciting. Bit, but it's like I don't know. It's getting to a point when I'm like, wow, I'm I'm excited for just getting on a camera and talking to you, and maybe three people are gonna listen. I don't give a shit. Like I'm I'm really happy. I don't care. I'm really excited just to be here. And I'm, and I'm excited like, to be here to about, about you to talk with you and about you and yeah with you and it was just fun do you want to bring it i don't want to wake up the cat but no nope. you can but, just turn just it and i'm gonna turn i'm gonna turn the microphone down so you there can see her you can turn it all the way down look at her oh that gorgeous girl hey everyone have a good one this is it for episode seven